Welcome to Sibspot. Today's Reddit stories are from Am I the A-Hole? Story one is by Throwaway Quiter. Am I the A-Hole for refusing to take care of my children? I'm a 26 female, gave birth to my second child two days ago. It was a beautiful home birth, so I was never discharged from a hospital. With my first and this pregnancy, I made it clear to my husband that I wanted to follow the 555 rule. He seemed to drag his feet, but because he wanted kids more than I did, he agreed. I still love my kids dearly and wouldn't not have them now. That's a double negative, so they're just saying that they would still have them, given the chance. I just didn't want to go through pregnancy. First five days, in bed. Nothing but skin to skin with my daughter, breastfeeding and resting. Next five days, on bed. Sitting up, still breastfeeding, cuddling with baby, doing homework with my son, crossword puzzles, etc. Next five after that, around bed. Still majority resting, but doing light chores, folding laundry, diaper changing, just not standing for more than 30 minutes. All while still cuddling with baby, breastfeeding baby, doing homework with my son, and coloring. This baby is very colicky, and my husband is the one having to get out of bed, walk around with her, and sit in the rocking chair, do diapers, and take her and my son on walks to get some sunshine. Our son, five, has started acting out at home due to the stress of the new baby and lack of sleep. We've offered him going to my parents next door, and he seems interested. We've prepared a month's worth of freezer meals for dinner, and all he has to do is throw the disposable tin in the oven and walk away for a few hours. We have more than enough disposable dishwasher. We have a dog he needs to feed and take out on walks with the kids. Today he came crying to me saying it was all too much and he couldn't do this by himself. I reminded him that he agreed to it and I have to go back to work shortly after the 555 is up. So I need to be as rested and healed as possible so I can better perform tasks at work than come home and perform tasks as well. He begged me to help out with our son who will not sit still and help him with light cleaning, wiping countertops, gathering clutter into a pile, etc. I again said no. I am entitled to rest and I will help around the house in eight days. Edit to add, I'm not looking for advice on the 555 method, that's not what this post is about. If he doesn't want all this extra work, he shouldn't be asking for his wife to pop out another baby. If he can't handle it, then your husband needs to step up. He promised you adherence to this method. He needs to stop crying about it. It's not that much longer, and then he'll get some respite from it. And if he can't manage all of it, that's okay too. He doesn't need you to get up and do stuff. Down in the comments by Robin Farmwoman. Not the a-hole. I assume all the stuff he's crying about is the stuff that you're going to be expected to do on an ongoing basis after you return to work. Under that by the OP. Yes, I for the most part do the cooking, cleaning, 90% of the child care. He mostly just feeds the dog and occasionally walks him. Under that by the swish can. So what bringeth this man to the table, then? Under that by the OP. His personality and audacity. Our next story is by Dishes Game. Am I the a-hole for insisting that my husband, who's in his 40s, not call our daughter, 15, a b-word? Background, my family plays a game every night to determine who does dishes. The loser of the game does dishes. The following night, that person has immunity and gets to pick the game. We've been doing this for over a year, and I thought it was working well for everyone, until tonight. Tonight, I, in my 40s, picked Mario Party. It became apparent early on that RNG had decided my husband, 40, was going to lose. Sometimes the dice just hate you. Our daughter, who's 15, landed on a square that requires you to fight for coins with somebody, and she picked her dad, since he had far and away the most coins of anyone despite the fact that he was losing miserably. He lost the minigame and just lost his cool. He decided to go start the dishes early since he was clearly losing, which ruined the game for the rest of us. I could have let that go, even though it sets a terrible example for our little kids, 15 female and 13 male, he is only human, and people have off days. However, I lost it when he decided to refer to our daughter within her earshot as a B-word for choosing to fight him in the minigame. I saw red. She is 15, and her own father just called her a B-word over an effing game. 
I called him on it and told him I thought it was inappropriate for him to call his daughter a B-word. When he did his best to try to argue that it's just a word and I was overreacting, I explained to him as best I could that the word has been used to dehumanize women and that's unacceptable. He reacted and maintained that I'm the a-hole and pulled a victim card on him. So, good people of Reddit, am I the a-hole for not wanting my husband to call my daughter a b-word? Some words are unacceptable to use towards family members. That one and the see you next Tuesday word are two of them. They're not acceptable to use towards women in a household. You can use them towards women outside the house if the woman is being a b-word, but you generally don't use either of those words to somebody you're close with, let alone a child. Down in the comments by Riley's voice, not the a-hole and your husband is a childish brat. Show him this thread once the comments build up and that will soon shut him up. He needs to apologize to all of you, but most of all your daughter. Then he needs to put on his big boy pants and grow the heck up and learn how to control his temper. Down underneath that by the OP. Well, that answers my follow-up question of would I be the a-hole for showing him this thread? Under that by a Christie and Tien. OP, I was 12 the first and only time my mom called me a B-word. I'm now 30 and I still remember it clear as day. Now, don't get me wrong, she's profusely apologized for it, even to this day, but it still leaves scars hearing that from someone you love, especially your own parents. Your husband was wildly out of line and owes both you and your daughter an apology. There's no reason a grown man should be throwing a tantrum over a game that means nothing at the end of the day, whereas his word choices could leave wounds that would last his daughter's lifetime. Our next story today is by Away Priority 5513. Am I the a-hole for saying, I didn't realize being an introvert also made you a rude b-word? I, 23 female, will keep it short. My new sister-in-law is extremely rude. She's 25. She will straight up ignore you if you try to talk to her. She is never engaged with the group and always on her phone. One word answers are very common. Eye rolls and so on. This has been brought up multiple times to both of them and the reason she gives is that she's an introvert. I am also an introvert and no, that means I get my battery charged by myself and not in group settings. It doesn't mean introverts don't know how to interact with people or be polite. We were, we were dinner. <laughs> okay, I have to read this. They forgot a word in this, but it sounds hilarious <laughs> the way it's written. They wrote, we were dinner for the youngest 21st birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, happy birthday, you're going to eat these people for dinner. I'm sorry. We were having dinner for the youngest 21st birthday. After the food, everyone was mingling. My mom tried to talk to her and got the cold shoulder. I went up and asked her while she was on her phone if she wanted a take-home box for some cake. I was asking everyone this. She ignored me. I asked again and she told me she's an introvert. Leave her alone. I snapped and told her I didn't realize being an introvert makes you a rude b-word. She looked shocked and my brother called me a jerk for this. We got into an argument and they left. The family agrees that she's rude, but I probably shouldn't have said that. My sister asked why we even invite her to family events because she always acts like that. So, outside opinion on this. Some of the nicest people on the planet that I've ever dealt with, including when I worked at a high school were the introverted kids. And they usually don't interact in big social circle groups, these kids that I'm thinking of. They would come to me and they would talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. They had so much to say. Being an introvert doesn't mean you don't interact with people. You may not like being around lots of people. You may want to recharge and just by yourself at home, reading a book or playing games by yourself. This girl is not an introvert, she is rude. You don't just ignore people if they're asking you something. I also think you shouldn't have called her this word in front of family. That wasn't right of you either. She's being rude, yes, but it was also rude of you to say that to her. She's still part of the family, even if she has no idea how to interact with people. She's completely on her phone the whole time and trying to ignore people is what she's doing. But down in the comments by Echo Mountain 158. You're not the a-hole. Nope. She's just straight up an a-hole. Being an introvert isn't an excuse to act like this. 
Honestly, the way to go about this is to feed into it. Don't talk to her, ever. Offer her nothing. When someone says, go get everyone, make it everyone but her. Never acknowledge or speak with her. Give her nothing. Invite her to nothing, and don't remind her or call her over anything, ever. When she speaks, don't even acknowledge her. When she complains, throw her attitude back at her. But you're an introvert, so obviously you don't exist and can't be bothered. That's not my problem. Then I roll right back at her and go back to ignoring her. Sounds like the perfect kind of revenge. And the way to fix it. Give her a dose of the rudeness that you're experiencing. Maybe she'll wake up then. She doesn't have to be an extroverted person. She can stop being rude, though. Our last story today is by Sail Civil 2571 Update. Am I the a-hole for not letting my husband put a Peloton in our sunroom? For anyone who cares, he put the Peloton in the sunroom. It is not in the middle of the room as it was before. He did put it in the corner next to my Pilates equipment. I asked why he couldn't put it in his room, and he said there was no room. I asked why he couldn't put it in the guest room, and he said that he would, but we need to clear stuff out first. That weekend, I did a major clean-out of the guest room, cleaning out things we didn't need and rearranging to make room for the Peloton. When I showed him the space for the bike, he said, But it's workout equipment. It should go with the workout stuff. I explained, pointing to his man cave, This is your space, and the portion of the sunroom is my space. I don't put my things in your space, and I would not like the bike in mine. He said, But you can use the Peloton. Now, I'm not going to use it. I don't like it, and it's principal. It's in the spot I didn't want it, so I definitely won't use it. Is it petty? Yes. Am I proud? Also yes. To add, we recently got a new coffee table, and we pushed the old one off to the side. I asked my husband to help me move it to the garage until we can find a way to dispose of it. He kept saying, later, and three weeks later, I decided I can do it myself. It was a bit large and heavy, but it's on wheels, so easy peasy. I may or may not have lost control of the coffee table around a corner and may or may not have put a tiny hole in the wall. There is no hard evidence that it was me, and thus the incident remains alleged. Anyway, given the recent event, I am on a slight probationary period of moving large objects myself. So now, friends, I stare at the peloton in my space and debate if I, A, try to move it myself, B, suck it up and leave it where it is, or C, set the house on fire, collect the insurance money, and never see the bike again. And for those who don't understand sarcasm, that was a joke. I'm obviously not going to leave it in the sunroom. (laughs) Oh my goodness. (laughs) This person is demented. (laughs) Um, yeah. You're not the a-hole for wanting your personal space. Why is the sunroom considered your personal space, though? He has his own man cave room. You've decided that the sunroom is yours, or you guys agreed upon that? That's what I wonder. There's always somebody in a comment section somewhere that's clever. They give you the best reply. By C. Magiscula. Oh, honey, the truly petty thing to do would be to move your Pilates equipment into the man cave. (laughs) I think if you guys have a good relationship and you kind of can laugh at each other, that would be a hilarious thing to do. Wait till he's out of the house and then put the Peloton in his room, if you can, without damaging the walls. And then put your Pilates equipment in there as well. I'm sure he'll find a different spot for it at that point. Our stories for today have come to a close. If you enjoy this content, please click like or subscribe or click the notification bell. Each of these things helps my channel grow. Until we meet again, have a bright and beautiful day.